we have been dealing with advance, advance being crossing over the classic text that we've been looking at both in Mark and, and in Matthew, just guys say, let us cross to the other side. In another text, he made his disciples to cross to the other side while he was sending the crowd away. And something happened in between. But the most important thing for us this morning is knowing that God is in the business of crossing his own to the other side. Now, the people that Jesus talked about crossing to the other side that he suggested to, to cross to the other side, they were not the crowds. The crowds came to receive and to eat, and they did. You know, there are people in their life that they are just part of crowd. They just eat. They look for free food. They look for free things. They go where people gather, whether it's in funeral, whether it is in wedding, uh, wedding occasions, funeral, some social events. And they just gather and they just want to belong. They go to church and look at which church is happening and where are things happening right now. They just want a crowd experience that they can take something from. It is not to such people that just guys will talk about crossing to the other side. It is to his, his disciples. When we talk about his disciples, we are talking about those who follow him. Those who follow his teaching. Those who obey him. Those who walk with him. Those who know him. Those who know him beyond just being a rabbi. He had to make a test. After walking with them for months, he had to set an examination and say, okay, what, who do people say the son of man is? What do people say about me? I say, oh, they say you are a prophet, one of the prophets. You are Elijah. You are just any one of those people. I say, okay, that's for them. Who do you say I am? What actually happened is that this was a process of separating people from the crowd. Because it is your knowledge of Jesus that separates you from the crowd of religion to his disciples. Your personal knowledge, not your father in the Lord's knowledge. Your personal knowledge, not your bishop, your, your pastor, not according as my pastor will say. It's very beautiful that you don't make any statements until you credit your pastor, your prophet. Very amazing, beautiful thing. But it can just be nothing other than religious crap with no substance. What separates you from the crowds of life is your personal vision of Jesus. Is your personal relationship with Jesus. Your personal knowledge of Jesus. That is what sets you apart. And it is to such people that they will say, let us cross to the other side. Let us cross to the side of plenty. Let us cross to the side of might. Let us cross to the side of victory. Let us cross to the side of abundance. Let us cross to the side of fruitfulness. Let us cross to the side of space. There are places and there are places. There are places as tight four by four cubicle of life where you live in a face me, I face you situation. Every day you are staring things in the eyes and things are staring you in the eyes. No breathing space. Oh, but there is a large place. The scripture calls it a wealthy place. It is not where you are. It is on the other side. Your wealthy place comes when you have crossover. And you don't cross over until you come to the place of receiving instruction because you are in the company of Jesus. Say, company of Jesus. Oh, come on. You want me to bribe you to say something this morning? Say, company of Jesus. 
sounds like you are planning to rise in 10 years from now. Say, company of Jesus. Sounds like you rise in 10 years' time. But it's okay. But just give yourself another opportunity. Shout, company of Jesus. Let me keep my comments about that one. Oh, praise God. I say praise God. So, let's tie this back to the revelation that broke out at the beginning of this year that the Lord has not given us permission to walk away from. Guess what that is? Remember what that is? Oh, remember what that is? What is it? Amazing, amazing, amazing. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 22 to 24, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 to 24. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. Today I came to fetch one firstborn to go across. Every day as somebody given the responsibility of serving the plan of God on earth, it's a privilege to know that every day you show up in your duty post, there is somebody God is looking for. In every season, there is somebody God is looking for. I am here for somebody this morning, this season. I am here for somebody. I am here because God wants to take somebody across. God wants to take somebody to the other side to the greater side, to the brighter side, to the wealthier side, to the purer side, to the holier side, to the better side, to the most glorious side. That's the plan. And God is in the business of taking his firstborn, his firstborn. So we have been talking about firstborn. You see, why do I go and talk, talk about the people to advance? It's not the crowd. It is those that have been called by God, set aside by God, separated by God. Jesus Christ spoke to the crowd, but he separated people from the crowd for himself. And when it comes to crossing to the other side, which is what advance means, when it comes to giving people acceleration, which is what speed is, it is not to the crowd. It gives the proud crowd food. That is what they want. Give them food and they eat. And he speaks beautiful things to them. But in parable. In parable. Why will he speak to the crowd in parable? Ah, let's not go there. Because the disciples will come to him and say, this parable, don't, what does it mean? He says, oh, to them, things are spoken in parable. So that it will be fulfilled what the scripture says in Isaiah. That they will see but not see. They will hear but not perceive. So why will he speak to them in parable? Because he did not come for the crowd. He did not come for the salvation of the crowd. He healed a few people in the crowd, gave them bread, but it was not to the crowd. Because the same crowd, on Good Friday morning, they were the same crowd that shouted, do away with him. Crowds. Crowd. He came to separate people, to hand over to them the revelation of himself. So that they will then take the responsibility of changing the destiny of the crowd. That's why he said, you will do the things that I did and you shall do what? Greater things. Because you need greater things to deal with the crowd. But first of all, it separates people. Do you know what church is? Church, the word church is actually from an ancient, ancient um, Scottish language, Kirk. And there is a, a, a Germanic version of it. A Germanic, these are ancient languages. But the original word is ecclesia. Ecclesia. And ecclesia is called out. Those who are kaleo, ex, those who are called out. So Jesus called the twelve out as the prime church or as the primitive church. Send the spirit upon them. So that in every generation they will come to a place. They don't just come to meet the crowd. They call people out. And when they call people out, those who will come from the family, 
those who come from the family, the crowd in the, the family in the crowd and all of that, they will become the church and then they will become the lights of the world. They will become the lights of the world. That's why he did not tell the crowd, let us cross over. The business was not with the crowd. The crowd is without name. The crowd is without face. The crowd is without direction. The crowd is without vision. The separated people, these are people with vision. I want to trust God that you are one of the separated people. How do I know you are separated? You have revelation of him and you have vision of him and you have a reason to live. You know that there are crowds in life you are brought out of in order to go back to be the light. This is why we talk about firstborn. Because when we talk about firstborn, it means there are other bonds in the church. It's a gathering of firstborn. But what is the mean? What is the ministry of the church? What is the purpose of the church? The purpose of the church is not churchy, churchiness, just being church. We are different from others. In our church, our doctrine does not permit us to do that. And we just boast about some church things. This is how our hairs are supposed to be dressed in our church. This is how women dress in our church. This is how our men dress in our church. And what is the effect of all this? This is your church dressing and church this and church this. What is the effect of it on the crowd? What is the effect of it on the family? How does your hairstyle change life? That's what matters. Because you are called out to be the light of the world. You are called out to be the salt of the earth. So when we say the church is the garden of the first one, let's look at that scripture again. We are trying to tie all of this together. You are welcome to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered where? In heaven. So what is church going to do? What's the business of the church? Why did Jesus establish the church? It's for the world. It's for the crowd. But unfortunately, the church is the crowd now. The church is the crowd because you may be seated here. You are not called out of anything. You've been in church 20 years. You are not called out of sin yet. You are not called out of the lifestyle of hell yet. You are not called out of the priority, the priority list of foolish people yet. You don't have the purpose of God running in your life yet. You are not different from anybody in your family or your neighborhood who is not a church person. You are not called out yet. And so that's why we come every day. Our, our language seems to be in a circle. Because when I come, my spirit speaks to spirit. I connect spirit. So if I walk the day you hear me leave with you and go to another congregation, you'll be surprised. That my language will change. Why? I will talk to them as their spirit needs. That's how it works. So the business of crossing people from here to the other side in the plan of God, it has to be first of all preceded by the arrangement of being called out, separated from the crowd. Because Jesus never crossed the crowd to the other side. Jesus never suggested to the crowd, let us go to the other side. It was to those who have been called out, his disciples, his apostles. He made the boat ready. He said, let's go to the other side. In another scripture, he said, you go ahead of me to the other side. That's it. We are called as firstborn so that we can be the salt of this earth. This is why you need to understand the doctrine of the firstborn. Because they called out the plan of God, the vision of God, the definition, how does God define those who are called out? How does God define those who are separated? He calls them firstborn. Patrick Grace Henry is the president, Grace Family Commonwealth of Champions. Worship with us every Sunday in any of our services, Rising Stars Assembly by 7 a.m. and Champions Family Assembly by 9 a.m. Earth Live on Planet 101.1 FM and Spectrum TV at 10 a.m. 
every Thursday for World Power Encounter by 5 p.m. Venue Goshen, Kilometer 14, Wangiba Road, Ekamban Sukara, Uyo, Akwaibom State. Join our live streaming on Facebook, YouTube at Grace Family Outreach and on the Christ Radio app. You can become a part of this great revolution by becoming a partner today. To all our partners and friends, we say thank you. For partnership, please call 0907-383-8742. For prayers, counseling and inquiries, please call 0818-043-3225 or 0803-671-5303. Grace Family, raising champions from ordinary people.